Every record collector out there has those albums that keep them up at night. The ones that for one reason or another stand out from all the rest. This might be because of a limited edition cover, a unique short-lived gimmick, a super small release window, the inclusion of a strange insert, or maybe the particular album just has a juicy backstory. Previously, we looked at 50 examples of these sorts of record releases, and today we're going to check out 50 more. They will be in no particular order and require no specific qualifications, except I need to find them interesting. So with that said, let's begin. Right off the bat, we have the 1984 compilation album No Remorse by English heavy metal hard rock band Motorhead. When initially released on vinyl, the album was not only available in a generic sleeve, but also a special edition leather one. Featured on the debatably real leather sleeve was this reflective silver artwork, taken from their self-titled debut, except this time with the hidden swastika removed. Because of its iconic status, the special edition leather cover was brought back to celebrate the album's 20th anniversary. Before pressing London Calling, the classic 1979 album from English punk band The Clash, to vinyl, at the last minute the band wanted to add one more track to the list of songs. This bonus track was going to be used for a previous deal, but that fell through, so the band decided to instead squeeze the song into the record runout on side D. The song was added so late in production, it's not even listed on the original vinyl jacket, lyric sheet, or label, as all were printed before the song's edition. To make up for this, the song's name is etched in the dead wax and noted on some hype stickers seen on early copies. What is this secret song that almost didn't make the final cut? Train in Vain. One of The Clash's biggest songs. So if you get your hands on an early copy of the album and notice your favorite song missing, don't fret. Just keep listening. As many might know, the 2010 album My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy by American rapper Kanye West originally had five covers. You might just know of this one, or the censored version, or you might just be familiar with the ballerina cover. Well, if you own the album on vinyl, you're actually able to choose which one you want and switch it out at any time. This was made possible via a hole in the album's jacket that allows for the interchangeable artwork to be seen underneath. This unique feature, which is noted on the front sticker, not only allows you to customize the cover, but gives the record a unique 3D framed picture look. Most record collectors have likely run into a copy of the 1973 album Ooh La La by English rock and roll band The Faces and noticed its unique vinyl jacket, which features a face capable of moving its eyes and mouth. This animated cover, featuring a photo of a 1920s comedian, is only able to be activated upon pressing down on the top of the record jacket. Not all pressings feature this movable face, with some instead using a plain image of the man with his eyes closed. If not taken care of properly, your interactive face copy could fall apart, leading to a truly cursed looking cover. A year before that, 1972, we got the album Thick as a Brick by British progressive folk rock band Jethro Tull. For the early copies of the vinyl, it was housed in a unique jacket capable of folding out into a 12-page newspaper. Within were parody articles written by the band members alongside the song lyrics which were stylized like poems. Initially the music label told the band these would be too expensive to produce, but the band countered with, real newspapers are cheap, so make it happen. The newspaper covers were actually said to have taken longer to produce than the music itself. Because of their complexity, the newspaper covers were eventually phased out in exchange for a generic record sleeve. But eventually, new crisp newspaper reissues were released, allowing fans to exchange out their dingy stained copies from the 70s. Fast forward to 2010, we have the album Teenage Dream by American pop artist Katy Perry. When opening an original pressing of the album on vinyl, you'll be greeted with a cotton candy scent as a way to, of course, tie in with the album's cover. This open and smell technique was made possible via scented inner sleeves. To make the sleeves smell the way they do, the pressing plant responsible said they did a 50-50 mix of a cotton candy fragrance and the print varnish. 
A well-known wacky record exists for the 2012 album The Flaming Lips and Hetty Flens, of course by American psych rock band The Flaming Lips. The record in question is the super limited blood-filled edition, and I'm talking real blood, not just red dye. The blood used comes from the many collaborators featured on the album. Not every artist on the album participated, but many did, with the most notable including Erica Badu, Bon Iver, Kesha, Chris Martin, and Sean Lennon, aka John and Yoko's son. Sean, alongside the other celebrities, have their heads placed on top of the nude bodies of John and Yoko from the Two Virgins cover. That artwork was placed on a large plexiglass case that many chose to keep sealed and refrigerated in order to preserve the blood. As you would expect with the concept, there weren't many of these. Only 10 actually. Each was hand delivered and cost a whopping $2,500, but it all went to charity. Kevin Parker from Tame Impala attempted to donate some blood to the project as well by draining it himself into a soy sauce bottle, which he would then deliver, but he was too late and all he was left with was a swollen hand for two weeks. When the album Country Life by English progressive glam rock band Roxy Music released on vinyl in 1974, it featured this cover, featuring two barely dressed German models. This immediately was deemed too raunchy, so early copies were sold in this nearly opaque green shrink wrap. Some countries went further with the censorship and chose to crop both women in a way to obscure the nudity. Many countries still thought that wasn't enough, so they removed the girls entirely in exchange for the original back cover, making for the lamest alternate artwork ever. Luckily, the pine tree cover would be abandoned for all modern reissues. American indie chamber pop artist Father John Misty decided for his 2015 album, I Love You Honey Bear, he'd release one of the most unique record jackets ever. When opening the gatefold of the dioramic metamusical funtime version of the vinyl, you'd be greeted with the first song on the album playing out loud in a way similar to those musical greeting cards. This was made possible by a hidden MIDI sound chip under the pop-up art. Some early copies of the album also came with a cassette filled with demos. The issue with that pop-up art though was when folded up, it was thick. Thick enough to warp the records. The music label even acknowledged this and said they'd issue replacements to those affected. In their apology, they stated how, in their attempt to create an ambitious sleeve similar to Sticky Fingers, they accidentally recreated the record's defective quality as well. In 1999, Peter Kruder, aka one half of legendary electronic music duo Kruder and Dorfmeister, released a self-titled album under the name Peace Orchestra. The album was only ever pressed to vinyl once in Austria, Peter's home country. Placed on top of the flesh-colored jacket was a real band-aid with the name of the album and artist on it. Not many people did, but if you chose to peel off the band-aid, it would reveal a realistic-looking wound. A record that is truly unlike any other comes from American indie rock band Bright Eyes for their 2007 album Casadega. What makes the vinyl version so incredibly unique was the jacket is covered with hidden artwork, only viewable with a decoder, which of course was included as an insert. Not all versions of Casadega are identical, but all use that same patented decoder technology borrowed from a small London-based company. Within the hidden artwork are many interesting visuals, as well as multiple secret phrases written in multiple languages. Going way back to 1966, we have the album Blonde on Blonde by American singer-songwriter Bob Dylan. When opening up an early copy of the album on vinyl, you would see this collage, featuring a photo of actress Claudia Cardinale. Because they didn't have her permission to use the image, she threatened to sue, so the label decided to switch out her photo with one of Bob for all future presses. Starting 1968 and onwards, she wouldn't be seen in the collage, unless you snagged one of the many foreign copies who seemingly didn't care about a potential lawsuit and decided to keep her in. For this next record, I have a bit of breaking news. In 2004, American producer Danger Mouse released a mashup album called The Grey Album. The name comes from its combination of Beatles White Album sampled beats played underneath Jay-Z Black Album acapellas. 
Because of the lack of clearance for the samples and the project's large cult following, there's an incredible amount of bootlegs made for it. Because of copyright, there's never been an official release, but there's always existed rumors of an apparent self-released CD, and maybe even a self-released vinyl pressing. One record in particular that some think might be real is this copy on marbled gray vinyl that is hand numbered out of a thousand. Under the Discogs listing is this comment, mentioning how Danger Mouse gave out the vinyl himself at the Winter Music Conference in 2004. In order to dive deeper into this mystery, I reached out to another owner of one of the initial hand numbered copies and they too said they received the album from Danger Mouse himself at the same exact event and they had a lot of context to back it up so I think it's legit. So if you're looking to get your hands on the only legit copy of the Grey album on vinyl, you need to find a copy with this cover, with this color, and with this handwriting, as many bootlegs attempt to replicate the hand sharpied original. For a notable 45 record release, there's the 1982 single No Thugs on Our House by English art punk band XTC. In order to tie in with the song's three-act musical concept, the sleeve for the record included a die-cut theater stage meant to display the cardboard puppets included as inserts. Once cut out, the puppets could use the jacket itself to act out the strange story in the lyrics. Exactly 10 years earlier, 1972, was when American psych rock band Jefferson Airplane dropped their album Long John Silver. For the original cover of the album, the band was going for a cigar box look, complete with a tie-in sleeve. That idea was further expanded on with perforated flaps that, once assembled, created a 3D box. Not all vinyl versions have this neat gimmick cover, some just have the basic box artwork. When brought back nearly 50 years later, the 3D design did return though. Apparently the design is also meant to replicate a weed stash box, but I had to be told that in writing because that looks like straight up mulch. Around that same time saw the release of maybe one of the rarest records ever. That being the original uncensored version of the 1974 album Diamond Dogs by English art glam pop rock artist David Bowie. Only featured on the super early copies as part of Bowie's already cursed dog body, were some genitals. And apparently that was just too risque, so nearly all copies had the problem area airbrushed out. And when I say early copies, I mean less than 10. The commonly shared around number is six total copies. These were never sold and instead only given to RCA sales reps for display purposes only. Originally there was another dog planned to be within the gatefold sleeve, but that idea was also axed for the same overly cautious reason. As you can imagine, these never pop up for sale, and when they do, they demand high prices. But luckily for fans, the dog junk was revived on modern reissues. Again, we find ourselves in the 70s with the 1972 album Full Circle by American rock and roll band The Doors. To tie in with the album's cover and concept, early copies of the vinyl came with a zoetrope insert, which is a device capable of animation via a fast-moving cylinder. The zoetrope needed to be popped out, assembled, and placed on top of a moving record to see the effect. Not all pressings feature this innovative insert, but many do. Personally, I don't know how effective the animation is, but hell, I respect the attempt. In 1993, beloved American rapper Snoop Dogg released his now iconic album Doggy Style. Available on the original project was 13 songs, or 14, depending on which version you had. When first pressed to vinyl, Doggy Style contained the song G's Up, Hose Down, which prominently used a sample from the Isaac Hayes song, The Look of Love. Right after release, the owners behind the sample demanded Snoop's label pay the licensing fee. They said no and decided to instead just remove the track. This was done by withdrawing the copies already sent out and then immediately repressing the album without the problematic song. If you somehow were able to get your hands on one of the original US or UK copies which contained the song, Congrats, you have the rarest version. The song has only ever been available on vinyl again for the 30th anniversary press. Another interesting old variant exists with a label showing the inclusion of G's Up, Hose Down when it's not actually on the pressing, as well as the classic song The Next Episode, which isn't on any version of the album and wouldn't be released officially until six years later on The Chronic 2001. 
From American singer-songwriter, R&B, funk soul musician Stevie Wonder comes the 1972 album Talking Book. On the early copies of the vinyl, the front jacket had a small portion of braille writing, denoting the name of the album and artist. Inside the gatefold was even more braille, spelling out a message straight from Stevie to his blind listeners. The braille covers were eventually discontinued, but the idea was brought back for modern reissues. This is said to be the first time braille writing was included on a record, and who better to do it first than arguably the most famous blind person of all time. For a complete vibe departure, we have the 2008 album Yul Coward's Don't Even Smoke Crack by American underground rapper Viper. I have chosen to include the vinyl pressing of this album because of how insanely difficult it was to receive a copy in good condition, let alone at all. If you're not familiar with Viper, he's a weird dude. Like a really weird dude. He's kind of self-aware, kind of not. He's a very unique artist to say the least. This wonky worded album is by far his most famous project, so naturally he pressed it to vinyl a few times. The thing is though, he self-distributes his own music, and a lot of the time, just straight up scams his fans. Asking for a refund usually resulted in being ignored or blocked. If you were one of the lucky few to actually receive the album, it was likely damaged because of Viper's extremely poor packaging skills. There's reports of records getting shipped in Walmart bags or saran wrap, leading to them being soaked in rain. Some arrive years after ordered. Most arrive missing the planned autographed insert. Some discs came cracked and some gatefolds came ripped in half. You usually didn't get the color that you ordered and sometimes you only got one of the two discs. Some records arrived with the packaging label on the record jacket itself and some arrived just empty with a CD and an IOU note attached instead. There are many other funny examples I saw online, but the point is, it was tough to acquire. Fans viewed this almost as a game to see if they could even receive the album at all. Despite how annoying this all sounds, it's only added to Viper's mysterious aura. One thing I kept seeing despite all the frustration with the vinyl is how the sound quality was shockingly amazing. Rewinding back to 1977, we have the 45 single God Save the Queen by English punk band The Sex Pistols. This is another one of those highly publicized pressings known for its extreme rarity and extremely high value, both of which come from the fact it's a controversial song pressed on the band's old label with most copies being destroyed. This is because right before release, the label dropped the band because of their hard to work with attitude, but 25,000 copies were already pressed. These were then destroyed with only 10 to 20 copies said to have survived. Because of the record's well-known status, there's a large amount of bootlegs trying to pass off as the real thing. The few existing real copies, which were housed in this basic A&M black sleeve, were said to only be given to the employees of the A&M label when it shut down in 1999. Attached with the record was the Golden Handshake Letter, a name given to the goodbye letter handed to employees in reference to the record's holy grail status. Many decades later, in 2017, British hardcore post-punk band Idols decided for their debut album, Brutalism, they'd release one weird-ass vinyl pressing. In addition to the normal vinyl version, the band released a limited to 100 batch of hand-numbered records, each for 100 pounds, that had human ashes pressed into the vinyl itself. The ashes used were from frontman Joe Talbot's mother, who the album is actually based around and is pictured on the front cover. This was made possible via a partnership with the band and a company named Vinyly, who specializes in this exact thing. This release was very controversial as many thought the concept was kind of messed up, but in my opinion, it's kind of sweet. For their 2016 album, A Moonshake Pool, English art rock band Radiohead decided for their vinyl release, they'd not only press a few normal copies, but also an elaborate limited special edition in the style of the booklet scene holding 78 records. Within the booklet was obviously some records as well as some CDs and 32 pages of artwork. By far the most notable aspect of the release was the piece of tape wrapped around the record jacket. This was a real piece of half-inch master tape taken from one of the band's many recording sessions. On the tape was three-fourths of a second of audio that could be from any of the band's eras, dating back possibly to their album Kid A from 2000. The logic behind this neat collectible was because of the fact tape degrades and the band said they'd rather fans have it over it getting thrown out. 
As a way of informing the buyer that the tape wasn't simply a piece of useless packaging, it came with a sticker noting how you should not throw out this piece of history. Not only is the 1994 album Vitalogy by American grunge alt-rock band Pearl Jam cool for its vinyl jacket, which is stylized after a 1920s medicine book, complete with an eight-page booklet, but it's also notable for how it was released, two weeks before any other format, in the 90s. If you aren't aware, the 90s was when vinyl was at its least popular point, so when Pearl Jam announced the vinyl version would come two weeks before the CD and cassettes, out of love for the format, fans were surprised, but they bought it up. This was the first album to chart on Billboard purely for vinyl sales since the CD became the most popular format. The sales records broken by Vitalogy would remain standing long after, until the previously discussed album Lazaretto shattered them. In terms of controversial vinyl covers, few are more notorious than the original one used for English blues rock band Blind Faith's self-titled album from 1969. Featured on the early copies was a topless 11-year-old girl holding a metallic airplane, which as you can guess, a lot of people had issue with, rightfully so, which led to it getting banned in the US. The artist behind the cover has a super long-winded explanation of why he included the girl on the cover, but I think most can agree it's undeniably creepy. The title given to the photo is actually where the band gets its name from. Most copies you find of the record will likely have the alternate cover of a picture of the band placed on a cream background. There's quite a few other alternate covers, but none are nearly as collectible or deemed as iconic as the original nude cover. The photo is only more unsettling when you find out the artist originally planned to use a 14 year old, but instead decided to use her younger sister, who only did the photo shoot because she was promised a horse, but was instead paid only 40 pounds. In 1987, American experimental, multi-instrumentalist pop artist Prince was about to release an album with no name, with no cover, no song titles, and under no artist name. He later decided it might be named The Funk Bible, but these days it's just referred to as The Black Album. After supposedly pressing 500,000 copies of the album on vinyl, Prince claimed the album represented evil to him, so he ordered the label to destroy all copies. Similar to many previous examples, a few select copies escaped destruction and are now extremely valuable. Several legit pressings are floating around out there, with the most desired of all being the US promo copies, of which there's only said to be 10 in existence. Because of the album's infamy and easy to replicate artwork, there's a bajillion fakes out there with some really interesting alternate artwork. To put an end to the non-stop bootlegging, the label officially pressed the album in 94 and even offered to send some copies for free only to the fans willing to send in their fakes. After that pressing, the Black Album never again saw release on the vinyl format. Those familiar with the 2001 album Discovery by French electronic music duo Daft Punk might be aware there was a sci-fi anime musical companion film released alongside the project titled Interstellar 5555. But did you know a vinyl pressing themed after the film exists, released in 2002 only in Japan? This alternate cover is very rare and collectible, with every copy selling for thousands. Only recently has the Interstellar copy been reissued, in multiple colors no less. Contained within the original jacket was not only a unique letter addressed to their Japanese fans, but also a Daft Punk credit card, which allowed holders access to exclusive songs. For their debut in 1981, American heavy glam metal band Motley Crue released their album Too Fast for Love on Lathura Records in a limited batch of roughly 900 copies. A year later, the band signed to a new label and re-released the album with new mixing, new recordings, a new track list, and altered artwork. These new copies are not hard to find whatsoever, but the original 81 Lathura pressings? Big time rare. The most interesting change made with the record was with Vince's hair, which he hated the look of originally, so it was shortened for all later releases. There are many other ways to quickly determine if you have one of the few Lathura copies, with the easiest being if the sunglasses are located in the middle of the back cover. Now, this entry is for several albums, all from the Australian hard rock band ACDC. 
The reason being, I've never seen a band with this many alternate foreign vinyl covers, and today I want to display the five most well-known ones. It's worth noting that the Australian versus US versions of albums have many other differences, but I'm just going to be focusing on the covers. In 1975, ACDC released two albums exclusive to Australia, those being High Voltage and TNT. A year later, the US received an album featuring music taken from those two projects under the name High Voltage with a never before seen cover. To add to the confusion, Europe also received a new cover the same year as the US. Also in 1976, ACDC released another Australian exclusive album titled Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap with this synthol arm looking cover. That album wouldn't be released in the US till 1981 where, you guessed it, it received a new vinyl cover. Before that though, ACDC released another Australian exclusive album in 1977 under the name Let There Be Rock. The US version of that project would strangely release the same year but with a new cover. The final example is for the album Highway to Hell which released in the US and Australia in the same year, 1979, with again, different covers. I find this ACDC alternate artwork phenomena fascinating, especially from a collector's standpoint. When comparing the two versions worthwise, the Australian pressings are almost always the more valuable. When listening to the final song on side A of American roots rock band Moby Grape's 1968 album Wow, you'll hear spoken word instructions from a famous news broadcaster directing you to get up and change the speed of your record player. This is because for the song Just Like Gene Autry, A Foxtrot, it was pressed at 78 RPM to tie in with the song's 1930s style. To further artificially age the track, Dust Static was added for realism. When repressed decades later, the fun speed change gimmick was brought back. 1982, the year American hip hop trio The Fat Boys released their self titled debut album. A main focus for the original cover was, of course, pizza. So, when reissued in 2012 for Record Store Day, the album was pressed on a look alike pizza picture disc, complete with a three dimensional cardboard pizza box jacket. Not only that, but the B-side of the album shows the pizza's crust, complete with a receipt showing the album's track listing. Getting your hands on the pizza pressing wasn't easy, as only 2,000 were ever made. When originally pressed to vinyl in 1980, the album True Colors by New Zealand progressive art rock band Split Ends came in four color variations. Eventually, four more variations would be released, alongside a silver and black collector's edition limited to 2,500 copies. Another rare variant exists that was only black and white, but those were only ever given out for promotional reasons. A lesser known 11th fan club exclusive version exists where you are meant to fill in the colors yourself and then send it in for a chance to win a hi-fi record player setup. When reissued, the album was available in multiple different colorways, but not nearly as many as the original 1980s copies. True Colors is also notable for some pressings using this never before used diffracted light etching technology. Not only were the jackets colorful, but when held at the right angle, the discs would display colorful geometry as well. Brian Eno is back. Not as part of Roxy Music, but instead alongside Carl Hyde, who's most notably from British electronic music group Underworld. In 2014, these two music legends collaborated to create the album Someday World, which when placed on a record player was able to display a wide variety of augmented reality visuals via a free tie-in phone app. The holograms seen through the app are viewable at any speed and are meant to exemplify the concept of outsider architecture. In 1987, American art punk band Half Japanese released their album Music to Strip By, and for the vinyl press, to tie in with the album's name, the character on the front cover had a pair of underwear that could be peeled off like a sticker. This is likely a reference to an album from the 60s with the exact same name that did the exact same thing. This is a rare example of nudity that is so basic, I'm not even worried about revealing it here. Like with all sticker records, finding a copy with the sticker still intact is the goal, this time with two stickers, as the back cover also had one to obscure the indecent artwork. For the vinyl release of the Canadian post-rock band Godspeed You Black Emperor's debut album F-Sharp, A-Sharp, Infinity in 1997, they went all out. 
The initial run of first presses was limited to 500 copies, each of which was handmade, hand numbered on debossed purple cardstock with a hand drawn cross on the back and one of three photos hand glued to the front. In addition to that, there were many interesting inserts included, like an old concert bill, a blueprint, a credit sheet, a picture of a train, and a Canadian penny flattened by a train. There is some variation with what inserts are included in what pressings, but most contain all of them. Except modern reissues use an American penny over a Canadian one, as those are no longer being minted. I'm including the vinyl version for the album In the Aeroplane Over the Sea by American indie rock band Neutral Milk Hotel on my list because of how notably difficult it is to determine which pressing you have. Normally when determining a record's pressing, you're able to reference the catalog number, barcode, matrix number, but not with Aeroplane Over the Sea. Ever since its release in 1998, it's been repressed many times, and each time the record never changes. For the roughly 10 pressings that exist, fans have resorted to making diagrams detailing the minute weight and hue bias differences between the different versions in order to distinguish which record came from which year. The only easily identifiable copies are the custom ones that were hand painted by frontman Jeff Magnum himself in 2022, but only three of those were ever made so forget finding one. Like most records, the first pressing is the most desired edition, with it being limited to 1600 copies, but even if you find one, good luck proving it's legit. For their 1984 single, You Take Me Up, British new wave pop group The Thompson Twins decided to release the track on a picture disc. But not just any picture disc, a disc in the shape of a jigsaw puzzle piece, part of a set of three that together form a world map. All three pieces not only differ in shape, but with which artist's head is hidden within the continents. Despite there already being many variants, all with the same music, the band couldn't help themselves and made a fourth picture disc, again themed like a map. One of the most unique records I know of exists for the 1987 album From Here to Infinity by American experimental noise rock artist Lee Ronaldo, who's mostly known for being Sonic Youth's guitarist. Present on side B is a song titled Sav X, which has a listed duration of infinity. When looking at the song on the disc itself, it's actually just an unplayable etching of the dragon slash serpent seen on the front cover. Luckily, every song in the album ends in a lock groove, otherwise who knows what terrible noise would be made if the needle went over that etching. Surprisingly, that isn't the album's final song. That is found by putting your needle on the other side of the serpent. From Here to Eternity is also notable for having some of its songs recording while the master vinyl was getting cut, as well as having a very speed designation, meaning the album can be enjoyed at any RPM. Not only is the album Is This It by American garage rock band The Strokes, notable for its cover, of which was deemed too sexually explicit for the US market, leading to there being multiple vinyl covers out there, but also for the fact, depending on the version you own, the track list might differ. When the album was originally getting rolled out, different regions received their copies at different times to coincide with tour dates. For the US, their release fell on September 25th, 2001 only two weeks after the 9-11 attacks. So the band decided they should probably delay the album till October and maybe not include the song themed around bashing the New York City to Police Department titled New York City Cops out of respect to their help efforts. The song was removed from the CD release, but for the vinyl copies, it was too late. They were pressed before the attacks even happened, meaning the song had to stay on the track list. Some later US reissues kept the song on while others replaced it with a different track. So if you want to own an interesting piece of vinyl history, keep an eye out for the OG US press of Is This It, the album that bashed cops on 9-11. A truly unforgettable piece of vinyl record packaging is delivered to us via Argentinian progressive folk rock band Pescado Ravioso with their 1973 album Arto. Despite being under the band's name, the album is considered more of a solo side project for member Luis Alberto Spinetta. Anyway, for its original vinyl release, it was housed in this sleeve. Described by some as an irregular octagon, others an amorphous trapezoid, and some actually consider it star-shaped. Point is, it's obnoxious. And that was the goal. It was meant to be uncomfortable and stand out, like the poet the album is named after. 
The green color used on the cover is also a reference to the poet's writing. As you can imagine, everyone involved with the vinyl was very frustrated by it. The label barely approved the strange shape idea, some retailers refused to stock it, some cut off portions of the cover to fit it on the shelf, and others just pinned it to the wall. For later pressings, alternate jackets were made, like this scaled down white square cover and green gradient variant. Believe it or not, the obtrusive shape cover has returned many times, in Argentina no less, and each time it's covered in the loosest shrink wrap ever. Every time you see a vinyl copy of American emo pop rock band Weezer's self-titled 1994 debut, commonly referred to as the Blue Album, you see this iconic image of the four band members on a blue background. If you ever run into an original UK pressing, you'll instead be greeted by this cover the only one ever pressed showing the band's full bodies. This feet pressing, as it is referred to, was made in the UK but said to be for the Japanese market, hence the red sticker often seen in the corner, denoting its Time Bomb Records distribution. Even though this alternate artwork isn't too different from the original, everyone who lays eyes on it seems to agree there's just something about it that feels cursed, like something we were never meant to see. When talking cursed covers, one that comes to mind is for the 1976 album No Earthly Connection by English symphonic prog rock keyboardist Rick Wakeman. This anamorphic record jacket was meant to be viewed using a reflective cylinder rolled up and placed in the middle of the cover. The reflective foil needed for this optical illusion was conveniently included as an insert. This unique viewing experience can also be done with the artwork on the back of the jacket as well. If you look closely, the 3D tube view is meant to reveal the keyboard Rick was playing on is actually a rainbow. Thankfully, every pressing includes the needed foil because without it, we'd be left with just this. Shifting gears to a newer project, we have the 2016 album Sirens by American electronic artist Nicholas Jar. For the deluxe version of the vinyl, the front jacket is completely covered in scratch off paper, similar to that of a lottery ticket. Included in the plastic sleeve the jacket was held within was also a quarter that you could scratch with if you choose. This lottery paper concept has led to all sorts of custom covers, with some owners choosing to just scratch a little while others scratch off the entire thing in order to replicate the original cover. In order to tie in with the theming of the 1974 album The Good Earth by English prog rock band Man for Man Earth Band, early record owners were entitled to one square foot of land situated in the country of Wales. In order to claim this land, you had to tear off and fill out the coupon located on the record's sleeve. If done on or before December 31st, 1975, you would be the new proud owner of a chunk of British land comparable in size to the one seen on the cover. Later copies kept on the front stamp but removed the internal coupon as the promotion was no longer available. Unlike most collectible records with interesting inserts, it's actually cooler to find a copy with the coupon missing because it proves the album was used for its ecological intent. Similar to many previous examples, the 1994 album Dookie by American pop punk band Green Day received some censoring, but not for any nudity or lewd imagery, instead for this an Ernie puppet. Only available on the original US and UK vinyl presses can Ernie be seen. All other reissues have him airbrushed out. This was most likely done out of fear of litigation, but rumors exist that Sesame Street did end up suing, while others claim the Muppet removal was so parents didn't confuse the album as music made for children, which I doubt ever happened. So if you happen to find yourself in possession of an Ernie cover, know that you in fact have the oldest and most collectible version of this 94 classic album. For their 1968 self-titled debut record, British psych rock band Soft Machine got creative. Viewable through a hole in the front cover was a spinnable wheel containing images of the band as well as some subtle nudity. More ass could be found within the gatefold and on the back cover, and you guessed it, it all needed censored. This was done in a variety of ways, like switching out for an alt cover, adding clothing to the women, and sometimes just heavily modifying the original cover, in some cases by removing the wheel entirely. Modern reissues have decided to do away with all that added clothing to instead restore the original cover with all three backsides back. When pressed to vinyl in 1996, the album Heavy Petting Zoo by American punk band NoFX received a completely different cover than its CD counterpart, 
and a different name, instead going as Eating Lamb, which if you've seen the cover, you get why. I'm hesitant to show the artwork, so I instead recommend you just look it up because it's truly an unforgettable piece of vinyl record history. Despite the CD and vinyl covers having, in my opinion, equally gross covers, it was the LP version that the German government banned for public display. For the record stores that were allowed to sell the album, some also sold lamb sex dolls that, if inflated, could be used to recreate the classic controversial cover. On a lighter note, we have the 1969 album Odessa by British pop disco group The Bee Gees. For the first pressing of the album, the record would be housed in a fully flocked jacket, giving it a velvet-like texture. The unique felt sleeve sadly wouldn't last long as it had to be discontinued due to high production costs and for causing allergic reactions to the workers who assembled it. Not only do many of the non-textured reissues use a different font, but many exclude a record's worth of songs. Because of its iconic status, the original Red Velvet cover would return alongside the original double disc tracklist. Many music lovers are probably aware of the planned first cover for the 1968 album We're Only In It For The Money by American experimental rock band The Mothers Of Invention, that being the Sgt. Pepper's parody cover. The story goes that frontman Frank Zappa spent thousands on the original elaborate photo shoot and even called up Paul McCartney himself for approval, but neither his label or his own, Capitol Records, was going to allow it, resulting in the album getting delayed five months. So all 1968 copies used the planned inner artwork for the cover instead. That is except for the Australian press. In Australia, in 1968, the Sgt. Pepper cover can be seen on both the front of the stereo and mono copies. Yes, the Sgt. Pepper artwork is viewable within every record release in the inner gatefold, but not on the front cover, except down under. This version is actually quite different from all the rest, with it not being a gatefold, it not including the fun inserts, and having unique back artwork. Only in 1972 did the UK have the guts to use the original cover, followed by the US finally in 2016. Even now, people still think it's not possible to own a 68 copy with the Sgt. Pepper cover, but in fact, it is. You're just never gonna find one as the Australian pressings are extremely rare. Wrapping up here, we have the 2011 EP Coloring Book by American post-hardcore band Glassjaw. When first pressed to vinyl in 2013, the band designed each record to be a random combination of three different colored separate rings, each of which contained one song on each side. Luckily, each song had a locked groove, stopping the needle from getting stuck in between songs. If you didn't want to bother with picking up the needle that many times, a free CD was included as a listening option. The original release was limited to 120 copies, each of which had a one-of-one -one colorway, was hand-numbered, framed, and included a free concert ticket. The demand for the three-ring record was so high, the band decided to repress the album for its 10th anniversary with the same three-ring concept, except this time you could choose your custom colors. These copies are less sought after than the original 120 and are a bit on the controversial side with many customers claiming the new packaging significantly scratched each ring. Regardless, the concept is very innovative, undeniably cool, and a great way to end off this episode of Vinyl Oddities.